homecoming at the University of Florida. More than 90,000 will make their way inside Van Hill Griffin Stadium as the undefeated Florida Gators take on the once defeated LSU Tigers in a battle of two top 10 teams. reaction from the crowd as the LSU Tigers finally take the field. Good afternoon everybody I'm Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. This is why we're so lucky to do what we do and we welcome you to Gainesville. It's easy to dissect isn't it? Florida, every goal is still reachable. Urban Meyer said the best thing about being 5-0 five and, five and oh is that you can get to 6-0. and oh. And the Tigers of LSU got an enormous lift in the game we hope you just saw as the other Tigers, Auburn, lost to Arkansas. So take a look at the standings. First of all, in the SEC East, Florida undefeated at 3-0, and oh, followed by Georgia. They've got a huge game with Tennessee tonight. And look who's on top in the West. Houston Nuts' biggest win in his nine years at Arkansas. The Razorbacks are undefeated, followed now, once defeated Auburn and LSU. Gary Danielson, we've got two outstanding defensive teams. This going to be 7-3? to three? No, it's not going to be say You would think so, maybe, but I don't think it is. You know why? There's about seven or eight wide receivers on this field for both teams and experience at quarterback. And both these quarterbacks against these great defenses must come through. Chris Leak has been playing about half a game, and he cannot play half a game and beat LSU. He needs a full game. Jamarcus Russell has been hot, but they are burning about not throwing the ball against LSU, and they're out to prove that they can throw it today against Florida. Big news for the Florida Gators. They have Marcus Thomas back in the defensive line. For more on that, let's go to Tracy Wolfson. That's right, Byrne. Florida will have their top defensive lineman back on the field today. Senior Marcus Thomas has been reinstated after missing the past two games for failing a second drug test. Urban Meyer released a statement on Thursday saying that Thomas had successfully appealed his indefinite suspension. He said the decision was not made by the athletic department, but by a committee consisting of university personnel and approved by the school president. Meyer said he has been granted the opportunity to play, but he still has responsibilities and obligations for which he will be held accountable. Guys, a big boost for this Florida defense today. Yes, it is, Tracy. How much does that impact this Florida team? Bert, I think it's huge. If Florida is going to win this football game, their front four must be dominant. And Marcus Thomas is the most dominant player for their front four. He gets that inside penetration against Jamarcus Russell. If they don't, I believe LSU will be able to throw the ball. This game, as are all of our SEC games, brought to you on CBS and high-definition television. Well, this is the 53rd meeting between these two, and this is the first time ever both teams have been ranked in the top 10. LSU has won its last two games, and they've also won the last two trips here to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Perfect conditions. LSU won the toss. They've deferred the option for the second half, so Chris Jackson will kick off. Jamel Cornelius and Brandon James are the two men deep. I thought it was loud last week. <laughs> that was for the Alabama game. A 28-13 Florida victory. Here's the kick. Brandon James will take it five yards back, take a knee. Touchback 
And the Gators, the senior Chris Leak, operating at quarterback. And let's take a look at Chris Leak and the other Gators on offense. The lineups presented by Applebee's. Leak is having a fine year. He's not played well historically against LSU. Up front, Trout Wine Tart, Rissler, Drew Miller, and Carlton Metter. Dallas Baker, Bubba Caldwell, two of the wideouts. Keiston Moore opens for Deshaun Wynn. Out with a knee. Tight, uh, Tate Casey is the tight end. And Cornelius on the other side. Out of the gun, first down. Casey sets up near side. Four men down for LSU on first down. Play action. Leak fires it out. It's caught by Cornelius. He is belted as he gets to the 27-yard line. Jonathan Zenon, number 19. And here's a look at Bo Pelini's defense. Up front, Jackson Dorsey, Favor Wright, and Chase Pittman. The linebackers. Ali Highsmith, Luke Sanders, Derry Beckwith, leading tackler on the team. And this might be the best secondary in the country. I don't Zeman, think, Landry, Daniels, and Jackson. I don't think there's any doubt. They've got experience, speed, and they know their technique's as good as anyone I've watched on tape. Second down and three. Ball at the 27. Now three men down for LSU. Quick flip. Left side. First down, Florida plus. Percy Harvin, number eight. The exciting freshman out of Virginia. He suffered a high ankle sprain the first play of the second quarter at Tennessee, limited to once one play since then. And you can see the strategy changing for Florida. Against Alabama, they tried to establish a running game early. Now, with speed at the flanks and Percy Harvin playing, they get the ball to those flanks and keep this LSU defense honest. Gain of 14 first down. That's Keiston Moore in motion. Leak rolls out, fires it out. Caught again. He's off to a quick start. This is Cornelius Ingram listed as the backup tight end. Yes, and, and you can see the way the ball is being spread around. Now, the strategy for Florida against this outstanding defensive line for LSU is to throw the ball quick. They don't think their offensive line can hold up on those third and longs, so they're going to throw the ball more often early in the game and try to establish the outside flanks with the short passing game. Second down and four. And again, from the shotgun. Four men down now for LSU. They bring the blitz. Keaston Moore gets the handoff. Quick opener up the middle. First down, Gators at the 37. LaRon Landry, but it's a gain of 15. Florida fans are already saying how much cleaner it looks in this football game. It's run right between the tackles, right? How much cleaner it looked than anything they saw. Follow Billy Latsko, number 42, and you get positive yards, and that's exactly what happened. And remember how much Florida changed after that LSU game last year, basically 42 into the offense. Right, Latsko, they also put Tate Casey in after losing in Baton Rouge last year. His coaching staff had a meeting upon return to Gainesville from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m., and that's when they modified the spread offense. Well, Chris Leak has to use a timeout. We are scoreless with 12.59 to go in the opening quarter in Gainesville. First down and 10. This has got to be a great omen for Florida. They have been a slow starting team this yes, year. Yes, and now you wonder, will LSU and Bo Pelini panic too soon and start bringing that blitz? That's what Florida is expecting. Jared Faison, the freshman who was a high school quarterback, is in the backfield. He's run four times this year. He blocks this time, and it's a play action. This one intended on the left side for Faison and Leak with his first incomplete pass. Gary, keys to the game. Well, I think both teams are going to try to accomplish the same thing. Both these defenses are good, but I think it's going to be explosive plays. I can't see either team driving the ball consistently, so we're looking for 20-yard passes or 10-yard runs. That'll be a key to explosive plays. And then I just got a sneaking feeling here that special teams can Florida win the SEC without kicking a field goal? Her? <laughs> I mean, has anybody ever won the championship without kicking a field goal all year in this conference? They I have yet to kick one this season. 0 for 3 for Chris Hentner. Second down and 10. This is Keaston Moore again. Deshaun Wynn out with a knee injury. And Moore, one of those big plays, he's got a 15-yard run. And Chase Pittman makes the tackle, so it'll be third down. 
Well, I mentioned the slow start. Excuse me, Gary. This is a, a team that's only scored 27 points in the first quarter. And LSU has given up nada. That's that's an interesting matchup. But nobody, they shouldn't score, should they, with that matchup? <laughs> um, Florida also behind in every SEC game, 10 to nothing in two, and actually trailed Kentucky in that football game into the second quarter. Third and eight. Three men down for LSU. Five out. That's Cornelius going in motion. Now settles up to block. Leak goes right. He's done that. Here's Dallas Baker. First down, Gators. Very interesting strategy evolving early in this football game for LSU. How effective were they? As you're going to see a little snag route, they call it. In and back out to the thing right here. Come in, back out. A little snag route to Baker, who does very well after the catch. He has all year. The blitz was so effective a year ago. Vern, we talked to all the coaches. They all said they expected the blitz. So far, no blitz. On first down and 10, backs in the eye. Latsko is the fullback. Gainesville native who began his career here as a walk-on. And off, they'll test the middle. Deshaun Wynn, as we mentioned. Oh, and there's a fumble. There is a fumble. Jesse Daniels recovers, and LSU stops the Florida drive. Well, that's why Florida was so worried about not having Deshaun win. He had become a dependable running back for Florida, not making mistakes, not turning it over. And what happens? He's down more right here, gets into the middle of the pile, gets hit, and the ball pops loose, and LSU Gets a stop early in this football game with all these people. Welcome back to Gainesville. No score, first turnover, fumble recovery by LSU. And Jamarcus Russell, the junior from Mobile, Alabama, having a brilliant year. And fresh from the best game ever, he threw for 330 yards last week. Up front, Black, Johnson, Helms, Johnson, and Diakowski, who's also already graduated. Davis, Doucette, and Bo are the wideouts. Jacob Hester is the tailback. And Robert Dixon is the tight end. Here's Hester, the leading rusher for the team behind Jamarcus Russell. Russell with time. Nice catch at the 34. Stop made by Dwayne Bow, number 80, the senior from Miami. Defensively for Florida, they will start with McDonald, Estepinen, Joe Cohen, and Jarvis Moss. The linebackers, Brian Crum had his best game of the season last week, we were told. Siler and Everett also there. And in the secondary, Nelson and Joyner outstanding. Lewis and Smith, the cornerbacks, still watching. Aren't they? Hester almost broke into the secondary. He stopped at the 32-yard line, Earl Everett with the tackle. You can see that uh, LSU started this football game with two tight ends and a very dependable running back, Jacob Hester. I think the strategy by Les Moss is, let's start out this football game and not lose it early, okay? We think we can throw the football. We've got a young running back, Charles Scott, we'd like to play, but let's ease him into this football game and go with the guy I depend on. Had that great game against Miami in the bowl game, and I think Les Miles says I can depend on Jacob Hester. Now Sean Jordan, the other fullback, is in to provide blocking help for Hester. Rush from the corner. Here's Hester up the middle, out to the 43-yard line. Brian Crum and Earl Everett. Well, Jamarcus Russell got the first start of his career here as a freshman, and uh, he's not played all that well. It's kind of like Chris Lee. Yeah, that, but, but remember, let's be real fair here. When Jamarcus Russell started that game, he was 19 years old. He was a month older than 19. Rohan Davey and Matt Mock were 23 and 24 when they were playing good football. This guy's future is unlimited. He's a big one, 6'6", 250. Here's the reverse. They hand it off to Craig Davis, and he is hit and dropped. Nice recognition by the Gator defense, led by Ryan Smith, number 28. You know, Ryan Smith was in man coverage that time, and he just stuck with them, and that's why how it came. A 
Handoff, inside handoff, outside handoff. You see Ryan Smith going right across the motion because he had man-to-man -man on the play. Actually, that is a play you would expect a lot from, and Ryan Smith did a great job of reading. Marcus Thomas is in the game. Third and four, Thomas suspended for three of five games this year, is on the field, number 44. Russell with a lot of time. Comes right, motions his man to go deep, and Davis does. It's a great catch. A flag is down. And Marcus Thomas is saying, I got held. Personal foul. Oh, wow. Oh. He did not get held. Marcus Thomas was sure he got held. Maybe he did, but that's not what was seen. Jamarcus Russell came out of the pocket and threw it down the sideline, inside on Thomas. Comes up. Yeah, that looked pretty mm -hmm. clean. A lot of complaining for nothing right there. Well, that uh, it was not number 90. No, but I think they're calling a head slap is what they're calling. The old Deacon Jones, I think it was right. actually. Derek Harvey. Yes, number 91. 91. Boy. That, that, that is not something you want to do is call out the wrong number around here. Yeah. Number 91, right side of your screen. Let's see as he comes in, hits him. Yep. Kind of throws it to the helmet right there, and that's the, the call because it was Brent Helms that was called on the center. That didn't look too bad to me, I, I got to be honest. And after the 27-yard gain on the pass to Davis, the penalty puts the ball at the 16. Look at the red zone numbers. And a direct snap. Early Doucette. Early Doucette is, is so explosive against Tulane. He had six touches and scored three touchdowns. They gave it to him on reverses. They gave it to him on bubble screens. And they threw the ball downfield to him. He is really coming on right now as an athlete. If you look at him, he's not only big and rangy, he's explosive. And he takes it. Of the three outstanding wide receivers, he is the best athlete. Now, Ali Broussard is in the lineup for the first time. Did not play all of last year because of a bad knee. Had some weight issues, and he barges inside the six-yard line to the five. Brandon Seiler makes the tackle. Pretty interesting. I was out at practice early this week watching LSU going, and they were riding Ali Broussard. Now, it was early in the week. It was only Tuesday. And I just think they were saying, we need you, Ali. Get yourself ready to play football. We need your talent. And I think giving him a little sugar in this football game because the coaches were on him in practice all day, and it looks like he's responding. He did not play in the home game against Tulane. And against Auburn, the one loss, that 7-3 game, limited to 26 yards on 10 carries. He's still the eye back. Motion. Now Florida's claiming there was movement that drew them across. You trust him? No. <laughs> well, I think we should just wait on these. Yeah, probably. Like. <laughs> what a stop on a fumble and a drive, and Jamarcus Russell coming out of the pocket again. He is very dangerous when he comes Outside. out of the pocket. All sides. Defense. Oh. Number 44. Don't trust him. Contact in the neutral zone. Fielding's half the distance to go. Still, take it down. I'd have to go back, Gary, to that. Day. 47 out of 47 scores yeah. inside the red zone. That is not counting. Uh, drives which ended at the end of the half. There have been two of those. But they've scored 39 touchdowns and eight field goals, their last 47 trips inside the 20. Russell, Broussard, tough one-yard game. Brian Crum, number 13, the outside linebacker, the strong side backer, with the tackle. Quietly, Brian Crum, who's played everywhere for this Florida defense, played offense and defense, is starting to emerge. He's he's becoming, making plays, becoming more comfortable playing defense. You know, we always talk Everett and Siler, but talking to coaches, they say Crum's playing good football also. Well, Florida opened the game with a fine drive. Easton Moore fumbled at the 27. Big play in this drive. Two of them, actually, the pass to Davis. Now Justin Vincent is the deep back. They've got a quartet. Here's Russell, lobs it out, caught, touchdown, Jacob Hester. That's a 
very difficult play for an inside linebacker. Brandon Seiler has the fullback on that play. He has to anticipate ISO and then slip out in the flat for the fullback. Seiler's right here behind the goal post. Watch what he has to do. Is it going to be a run? Is it going to be a run? Then he has to slide out past the picking tight end and get there really no chance and was almost underthrown trying to make too perfect of a throw by Russell. Jacob Hester's second touchdown catch of the season. Colt David on for the extra point. He's now hit 58 in a row, the third longest streak in LSU history. You get down running the ball, you have the ability to play action pass. LSU has done it all. Run it hard, pass it hard, and got out of the park. 7-0. Seven nothing with 6.45 to go in the opening quarter. LSU converts a turnover, a fumble return. And they go 73 yards, four minutes and 38 seconds. And take a note, 73 nothing. Woo! That's pretty strong. Now, admittedly, some of that talent couldn't match up with them, but Florida's can. <laughs> Well, this is the second road trip this year for LSU. The other was at Auburn. They lost that one seven to three. This uh, kick sails five yards deep, and it'll be another touchback. Second down and ten. LSU uh, lines him up as if the uh, charge of the light brigade's coming. Here's Ali Highsmith, and Chris Leak fumbles the ball, then gets it back at the 11. Ali Highsmith untouched. I can't tell you how confident LSU was that they had a blitz package that was going to get Florida problems. And you can see right here, the scheme of protection. Ellie Highsmith is right there at the end of the line. It's, there's no disguising here. He is going to come, and no one turns and blocks him. That ball either had to be out of Chris, Lee, Chris Leak's hands because he has to either know that guy's on block or somebody blew an assignment. And I don't doesn't look like anybody blew an assignment to me. And on fourth down now, Eric Wilbur is on to punt. Chavis Jackson, number 21, has uh, perched himself at the 35-yard line. LSU was going to attack this three-man, two-man blocking scene back there in practice. They attacked it all week. Here's Wilbur. Yeah. Jesse Daniels pulled up. He might have had a chance. There's a muff, and it's picked. Oh, it's dropped. James Smith, the center, and the ball is still loose. Who got it? Florida got it. Tell you, to turn the field upside down, Florida looked like they had no chance. Jesse Daniels thought he had a chance to get this one from the outside. Smartly pulls off, and now LSU says, all right, we'll just catch the punt. Called for the fair catch, did Jackson, and then, oh. Now this ball is a muff, cannot be advanced. Even with that was picked up, that cannot have been advanced, and there's a mad scramble. Latrell Alford, number 99, got it. And Florida has the ball inside the 20. It is a muff, but it's also considered a fumble recovery. One of the first truisms we all learned in football, you can't advance a muff. Leak has to, oh, he's belted. As soon as he let it go, Ali Highsmith was right there. That was great coverage in the secondary that time by LSU. Craig Steltz, number 16, just read that, uh, they call it a smash route. Outside guy goes down about five yards. The inside slot goes to the corner flag, and the Stelts almost beat him there. There was nowhere to go with that football, and in comes Tebow. Here's Tebow. Sounds like the Tonight Show. <laughs> Tim Tebow, the freshman. And uh, LSU is substituting. They came in with an extra defensive lineman. Charles Alexander came on the field. When he has been in, they've got Tebow packages. It's been essentially a run. This time alone in the backfield. Quarterback draw. Although you told me I had to come up with something new for that. Look at that. Look at that. Ran right over LaRon Landry, the All-American safety. He didn't just make six yards here. He ran right over one of the best football players in the country. Number 31, Jesse Daniels. Number 30, LaRon Landry. They have played a lot of football, those two safeties for LSU. Watch Daniels first, 
Landry's right there, and he just turns it and spins it and almost broke free. He electrifies this crowd. 6'3", 228. Jason Watkins to the left side at left tackle. So an unbalanced line, the handoff Bubba Caldwell going right. Looks for blocking help from Latsko, and it is not to be. Jesse Daniels puts the stop to him. And Jesse Daniels said it's a lot more fun tackling number five than 15. How about that? Do you ever see a freshman quarterback run over two safeties for, one, for the, maybe the, arguably the best defense in the country? And those are your two power guys, Daniels and Landry. When he is in the game, he has rushed 23 times. Bubba Caldwell's in the slot. Last time, remember, they threw that little bubble screen against Alabama. On second down, that's Latsko to provide blocking help. Chris Leak, quarterback draw. Down to the, well, if it looks, it's a, if it works, it's a great call. That is. And, and, and again, Dan Mullen trying to keep LSU off balance. You know, we gave him a lot of credit, did we did Dan Mullen, offensive coordinator last week, for trying to go against the grain. When you play a great defense like this, it's very difficult to let them know what you're doing as you take a peek at Dan and, and still block them. I think that was a worthwhile call. Yeah, I do too. I heard some murmurs, but it's because it's Leak instead of Tebow. So on third and goal. Dallas Baker in the slot here. You don't see that very often. LSU showing blitz. They're coming. Here's Leak. Drills it. At the goal line, it is down at the one. The catch is made by Jamel Cornelius. Now then. What do you do? Well, if you do it, you're going to do it with number 15. I guarantee you that. Well, and he's not coming in. Yes, I was, he is. Oh, there he is. Yes, he is. Yep. Another little snag route to the outside. Come inside, come outside. A little cross right there. Nice throw by Chris Leak, by the way. Not a lot of room. Remember, Tim Tebow told us he prefers the quarterback sneak from shotgun. Right. Well, he converted on fourth and two at Tennessee two weeks ago. This it's no, fourth and goal. No sneak here. They know where he's coming. Straight up the middle. Touchdown. Delayed reaction, but Tebow got in. Fumbles lead to both touchdowns. Yep. Two turnovers, a little shorter field for Florida, but there was no surprise where that ball was coming. This is not a gimme. Chris Hetland has had a couple blocked this year, but he nails this one. And with 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter, we invite you to take another look at Tim Tebow as he bangs up the middle and gets Florida on the board. Play action. Randall will scramble. Russell Rutter. And look at him run. He told us on the phone the other day, he said, I'm not known as a runner, but I'm not shy about trying it. Yeah. Pretty good coverage in the secondary that time. They wanted to go with a deep out, but the pressure up front, Jamarcus Russell had to come out. And you know, when we talked to the Florida coaches, they said, we are not concerned with him scrambling. We think when he scrambles, he looks to throw. And that time, Jamarcus Russell did a key breaker and took it right up. Which team currently has the longest home winning streak in the nation? Answer, a little later. It is in Auburn. No, it's not. <laughs> Arkansas. I think with the biggest win in Houston Nuts' nine-year career today, they knock off Auburn. Here's Jamarcus Russell, one-on-one -on -one coverage, right side, intercepted. It's picked off by Ryan Smith, his third in two games. And Smith goes left and is tackled at the 27. How about the turnaround? LSU thought they had a touchdown. The play reviewed Hester. His elbow was down at the one yard line. Then Jamarcus Russell fumbled the snap. Three and out, but Ryan Smith 
intercepts the ball. Tried LSU for a deep ball, but Reggie Nelson, number one, is going to hit Brandon LaFell, number one, a pair of number ones. Watch Reggie Nelson come over and clean out LaFell, and then that allows Ryan Smith, who gets the slightly overthrown ball, to have some running room. And look, number one's back in the progress again. An interception, I tell you, guys wide open all over the field, and Jamarcus tried to go deep on a kind of a misread, I got to say again, over the middle of the field. Craig Davis was wide open for about a 15-yard catch on the play. Brandon LaFell, who uh, felt the impact of Reggie Nelson, who was a, a late-arriving force, is still down. Craig Davis right there, wide open on the play. And yep. number one gets it on the other side. Watch this, pair of number ones. Look at that. Oh, gee. Reggie Nelson is just a smart football player. He knew he had to clean out the taller receiver, and that's a good play. Third LSU turnover, Ryan Smith, who played for Urban Meyer. Looks like LaFell's going to be okay. Has his third interception. He played for Urban Meyer at Utah in the 12-0 season. Leak play action. Fakes it, now fires it incomplete. On second down, Latsko sets up Allie Highsmith. Oh, that's tipped. Loose ball falls incomplete at the 18. Allie Highsmith, who in the, in the game in Baton Rouge last year had two sacks and three tackles for loss. He was named the SEC defensive player of the game. And Billy, he runs right through Billy Latsko this time. Latsko takes him too deep, should have moved up, and that allowed Highsmith to pressure the quarterback. When you're taking on a blitzing linebacker, and you got to figure, more than half the time, LSU is going to be being one of those linebackers. You have to move up towards the line of scrimmage and not let him get a run at you and put that hand up in the face of the quarterback. Highsmith out. Ricky Jean Francois, freshman defensive end, is in. Here's Leak. Pumps, fires. Bubba Caldwell out to the 45. It's going to be close for the first down. I think he got it. That was a nice throw. Nice protection on that four-man rush for that Florida offensive line. LaRon Landry will be very upset for not wrapping up on this play. He read it perfectly. Watch him come up. He tries to block, get a big hit on Caldwell, just like Reggie Nelson did. LaRon Landry, the All-American, tried to get a big hit there. You need to wrap up, and that cost his team a first down. Gain of 17, first down at the 40. 2.19 to go. Gators have one timeout left. Here's Lee. Dallas Baker across midfield to the 45-yard line. The short curl route, the short in route, everything 8, 10, 12 yards. This time, 8-yard route, hooks up real quick, reads it again, and look at that throw. If there's one thing Chris Leak is, I mean, he is calm, and when he's calm, he is accurate. And Tim Tebow replaces Chris Leak now on first down at the 45. We saw him here against Alabama fire a 23-yard strike to, call, uh, to Jamel Cornelius. First down and 10. Here's Cornelius going in motion. A double reverse. Tebow downfield to block. Can't find the man, but he does give Caldwell time, and that might draw a flag. No, it does not. Allie Highsmith, Tebow slips it. A gain of 11. You can see the package start to expand for Tebow. Dan Mullen says, okay, you think I'm going to run this guy just? I'm going to do other things. That time LSU had eight guys in the box. Good change of pace with the reverse. And number 15 is looking. Don't clip, don't clip. Very smart. He gets that block late. Caldwell does a nice job setting up and running right path. Jonathan Zenon, he did it last week for a touchdown. That's a gain of 11 in a 7-7 game with 1.39 to go. Here's Leak back in. Keystone Moore's pop. Oh, was he ever. Jesse Daniels with the tackle. Played a lot of football, Jesse Daniels. He was on that team as a true freshman that won the national championship. Now Florida's going to go a little no huddle here or quick? They're going to quicken up the pace. A minute 16 to go. Second down and 10. They have only the one timeout left. 1-10 remaining. Timeout LSU. Now they have one remaining. Bo Pelini called that one. 105 to go first half. Notched at seven. 
Here comes Cornelius. Leak with the play fake. Has to throw it short intended for Latsko, but uh, Tyson Jackson putting a lot of yeah, pressure. There's LSU's a flag down at the two. 12 guys on the field, though. My goodness. Yep, another big, huge penalty. Big, huge mistake for LSU. 12 men out there. They were all confused. A defensive package that didn't work. Want to count them? Well, I'll give it a try. I know they're out there. I did it. One, two, three, four, five, six, well, seven, man, eight, nine, ten, defense. eleven, and participation. twelve. Bingo. Half the distance. <laughs> First down. Purdue math major. Yeah, huh? yeah. That gets you into your sophomore year if you can do that. <laughs> Forty-nine seconds to go. And and that could cost four points. That penalty yep. right there. Now I know they're going to throw. I, I got a feeling they're going to throw a jump ball to Dallas Baker here pretty soon, don't you? Because that gets you one free play. Because remember, they only have one timeout left. Baker is wide to the left. Press coverage. Leak gets a good block. Goes for Baker. Double coverage. He didn't get it. Now, two things Florida had not done coming into this game. They had not recovered a fumble. They've done that. They still have not kicked a field goal. Now, there's a flag down again. And it's on LSU. Again. Yeah, Chase Pittman and Glenn Dorsey, two of their big studs up front, hit Leak just as you let that ball go to the side of the head. And that's going to be it. Rough on the passer every time. Personal foul. Illegal contact to the head. Number 72 on the defense. Penalty's half the distance to the goal. Still first down. That's Glenn Dorsey. Had that brilliant game at Auburn. Yes, he did. Number 72. Pittman's to the outside. Dorsey's going to come right up the gut. Pittman hits him. Boy, gee, oh, man. Yeah. They're that, playing football. That's brutal. They're playing football. That is brutal call. That could cost points. Here's Tebow back in the lineup. Latsko goes in motion. Tebow will run to the one. Number 15. Second and goal. They've got one timeout left. They use it here. With 28 seconds to go, they can't get it called. Urban Meyer, 27 seconds remaining in the half. Down at the one, Gary, two, uh, two tries here with 27 well, seconds left. I have to believe that's what Urban Meyer and Dan Mullen are trying to sort out is with this amount of time left in the game, in the half, excuse me, 27 seconds. How do we get two plays and still kick a field goal here? Second down, third down, and still have time to kick a field goal. I think the only way to do that safely would be a pass in there. Tebow in the game, there's no way they're going to let Tebow throw a pass, is there? Uh, yeah. You do? Yeah. Boy. By the way, the other two teams who have not goal. kicked a field goal, That's Tulane and Utah State, for those of you keeping the score at home along with us. Second down, Tebow. No timeouts remaining. Oh, jump pass. How about that? Oh, my gosh. That looks like 1955. Holy cow. Are you kidding me? I think it's Don Heinrich and the Washington Huskies. He faked the, the quarterback sneak and then hit Tate Casey with the pop pass. Urban Meyer must have got that one from Lou Holtz, didn't he, when he coached with Lou? I think so. Oh, that my gosh. Deep, deep, deep into the bag. And, you know, Tebow jumped up and didn't see him, at, and he tried to hang there as long as he could, and then shot a sky ball to Tim to take Casey. I'm like, I, I can't wait to watch that one again. <laughs> oh, man. What you got to do to win in the SEC, huh? A jump pass. Out in the Bay Area, Lee Gross Cup, the old Utah quarterback, just fell off the sofa. I, I, you're, it's stretching the definition to even call it a pass. It did go forward. It looked like a free throw. It sure did. 
Kate, right here's Casey. He's just going to block, 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 and then come right to here. The ball, by the way, is going to go way up high and then come down. Ah, double clutch jump pass, fall down and in. How about the job by Tate Casey, the tight end? That's oh. only his second catch of the year. Up and hang and slither and slather and fall in there. <laughs> And let's go down to Tracy Wilson, who is with Les Miles. Coach, penalties and turnovers have been killing you this half. How frustrated are you with this team right now? Well, I, I, it's not the team. We just got a, you know, the uh, the fumbled snap on the quarterback sneak on the goal line really hurt us. We got to come back. We got to have poise and play within ourselves. We are. We're going to come back and just show something in the second half. What happened in that last drive that allowed Florida to drive down the field and score that touchdown? Well, I, to me, they made plays. They threw the ball across the middle a couple of times and uh, came in and got a nice uh, goal line play and you know Tebow had and and. We need to we need to respond. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. Back to you guys. 14 to 7, Florida, on an almost unbelievable touchdown pass. Tebow, the double clutch at the line of scrimmage. Tate Casey with the catch. A big smile from the freshman Tim Tebow. The Florida Gators lead at the half, 14 to 7. We go back to Tim Brent. Welcome back to game down on the sideline. Tracy Wolfson with Urban Meyer a moment ago. Coach, I have to ask you about that touchdown pass by Tebow. Was that a design play? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a little. We, we ran that once with Utah. You know, a game like this, possessions are a premium. we got to take care of the ball. How important was momentum going into that second half? The, la the last five minutes of the first half is critical, and the first five minutes of the second half is going to be just as critical. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right, Urban Meyer mentioning Utah, and it gives me a chance to pop Lee Groskep again. <laughs> <laughs> and Tate Casey with the touchdown catch. Well, it was designed, but it didn't come off as designed. <laughs> Good for Florida. I mean, that, that, that was, you know, they took advantage of everything that happened, and they figured out a way to get two plays at the end. LSU won the toss to begin the game. They deferred the option, so they will receive as we open the third quarter. Early Doucette. Trendon Holiday are deep. This is Doucette at the three. Bobbles it. Oh, my. And it's in the end zone. Scramble for it. Safety. Safety. Special teams, Gary. Wow. Special teams. Special teams and self-inflicted wounds have been the story for LSU. Riley Cooper, the freshman wide receiver, is the guy who did it. But look at this. A hit by Cooper, and Cooper ends up forcing it for the safety. That is the second muff on a kicking situation. Chevis Jackson muffed a punt in the first half. Now early Doucette. Muffs the kickoff. Riley Cooper, the freshman wide receiver, safety. And it's a good thing Holiday got that ball because if he didn't, that would have been a touchdown. Since Doucette got the ball back, it was not really considered a muff. It was a considered a fumble. So he muffed it, he picked it up, got hit, fumbled. So now it's a live ball. It does not come back to the spot. Whew. Don't tell me you don't know the rules. Well, once in a while. And I'm, I got to learn more of them here because these games, everything happens. The turnovers that LSU survived a year ago are coming back to haunt them this year. There's the muff. There's the recovery. Now it's a live game. Cooper hits him. Free ball. Holiday did fall on it. Safety. Now the free kick for LSU. From the 20. Another true freshman player making a play right there for Florida. There's a bunch of them playing. 13 true freshmen have played so far this year out of a class of 26. Widely regarded by those who keep track of such things as the first or second best recruiting class 
last year. Here's Chris Jackson with a kick. Brandon James. Out to the 34-yard line. Early Doucette, my fault. Les Miles. Again, having to uh, talk to one of his players after a special teams problem. Well, and I think that's a good move by Les Miles. He cannot let his team get frustrated. Look, calls have been going against them. They've been making a lot of penalties. They've been having self-inflicted wounds. Too many men on the field, not enough men on the field. Now they have to settle down and just Les Miles has to say, listen, let's just play some football here and see what happens at the end of the game. Well, 16 to 7 now, so a nine point deficit. And uh, Florida back on offense. First down. Handed off to Keiston Moore. And let's uh, take a breath and look at the halftime numbers. And the turnovers is the huge check. I mean, special teams have been huge, as Vern just mentioned it before. Both teams ran 30 plays in the first half. Florida had the ball six times. LSU only had the ball five times. These games have become compressed, and every series and every situation becomes more pressurized. Second down and eight. Leak, Harvin in motion. They flip it out to Caldwell, who's got Dallas Baker trying to block. Caldwell knocked out of bounds up near the 43 and a half, maybe the 44-yard line. Can't stress enough that LSU cannot get frustrated here. They've made some mistakes. They've got a couple dubious calls against them. But most of all, they've shot themselves. When you fumble a snap on a one-yard line for a chance to score, you know, you had the roughing the passer. I can understand they're frustrated by that, especially what happened at Auburn a few weeks ago, you know. so. But they must concentrate, put that away, let Les Miles handle that after the game. First down and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Leak. Flips it out right side. Gets a great block. And here's Bubba Caldwell to the 43-yard line. Drew Miller, number 67, led the way. You called it. Great block by Carlton Metter, number 73. He's outside right there. Watch the big tackle. It's a wide receiver screen. He's going to push and then peel back and just flatten. And Tyson Jackson on the end right there, and that takes Bubba Jackson, who, by the way, is looking healthier and healthier every time I watch him. Caldwell, who missed most of last year with a fractured leg, suffered in the uh, second, ga third game of the year against Tennessee. Percy Harvin, the freshman, is on the field. Here's the handoff. It's Harvin. Such great, great speed. Harvin electrified this crowd in the first two games, suffered the high ankle sprain. Second quarter at Tennessee has played until today, one play since then. First game against Kentucky, he ran a reverse, didn't feel good, took himself out. Florida would like to use Percy Harvin a la Reggie Bush. And that's what they think he can do. And there's Harvin, All-State football, basketball, track and field in Virginia. Second down and one. Chris Leak has hit his last six passes. Tebow's in there now. Oh, look at this. Goes deep. How about that? Touchdown! Lewis Murphy! Mullen are pulling out all the stops in this one. They fake the quarterback draw, fake the wheel route, and hit the post route. Hetland's extra point is good. Post route right there is what's going to score. The wheel route comes over here. Laron Landry. Free safety, thinks it's a run. Watch him come up, does not get to center field. No one in the middle of the field. That is as easy as you can get it. Didn't even have to jump on this one. 
Tim Tebow to Lewis Murphy. Touchdown, Gators. Handed off to Hester on first down. He gets three out to the 23-yard line. Tackle made by Earl Everett. On their last four possessions, Louisiana State. Fumble, interception, safety in the end zone, blocked punt. Not a recipe for a Southeastern Conference championship, is it? And especially on the road. Yep. Four and one. The one loss was at Auburn. Second and three, the toss. Hester goes left. Drop. It'll be third down. Boy, there's not a lot of possessions left in this game. He gets six a half, and we're down to the fourth quarter. Will LSU get it three more times, maybe? They need 16 points. That is the end of three in Gainesville with a score 23 to 7. We'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium right after this word from your local station. In the fourth in the swamp, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, 23-7. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson. Marcus Thomas came across, then he got back, I think, and induced the right tackle to motion. Now, I think it was the tight end on this play, Vern. Tight end, okay. Yes. Before the snap, ball start. Number 89, offense. Yeah. Zinger. Yep. And what happened, see, if that would have been the tackle or the guard, they might have called it as an induced penalty, but they will not, with this guy moving, give, allow this guy to move. It'll be on the uh, wide guy. If you're close enough to do it, they'll give you the inducement. When you're two players away, they will not. Third and four becomes third and nine. Bo and Doucette go right. Davis to the left. Florida showing a four-man rush. Now Everett is on the corner, the linebacker. They're bringing only four. Russell fires it, got a man wide open at the 30-yard line. This is Doucette, who has an LSU first down. And uh, you began the game talking about special teams. I think we so often overlook right. the kicking game, but wow. Well, in an even game, and these are pretty evenly talented teams, something like special teams can be huge, and it has just been a giveaway for LSU. Block punt, you know, and 55-yard punts from Florida. The kicking game has completely gone to Florida in this football game. And, of course, we begin the fourth with time. So much a factor with the new rules. 25-yard pass to set. And here is Jarvis Moss tackling Jacob Hester. Florida's defensive line substitutes so much. In fact, Greg Madison told us in the meeting that they actually can substitute themselves. They can put their hand up like North Carolina basketball and say, take me out, and you can go out, and when you're the starter, you can put yourself back in at any time. So Greg Madison told us there is no reason when we watch film ever to have a loaf because you can take yourself out any time. Second and 10. Hester in the backfield, blitz coming. Randall lets it go, caught by Davis. Out to the 48-yard line. This might be enough for another first down. Reggie Nelson with the tackle. Let's revisit Gary's keys. Well, I thought it would be explosive plays in this football game, and all the explosive plays have been really more than just runs and passes. That was just one way to talk about explosive plays. The explosive plays that come in special teams, and that's what's happened. The special teams have been all Florida, but for LSU, a team that it can throw the ball deep with Jamarcus Russell to only have two, now three passes of over 30 yard, 20 yards. That Florida secondary has done a great job. Here's the stretch. That short. Third down. Remember now, Notre Dame came from 17 points down in the fourth quarter. This is a 16-point game, and Florida admitted it. They're not 
Michigan State, I understand that, but they run a similar offense. It's very hard for them to control the ball with the running game. Four fourth quarter drives in overtime or overtime for Jamarcus Russell. Third and a foot. Not a Jimmy. This is where they fumbled the snap before. That was on the one yard line. They get this one. Appears to have gotten the first down at the 49. Allie Broussard. And for more on the Florida defensive line, let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Thanks, guys. We spoke to defensive coordinator Greg Madison. He told us he sees seven starters on this defensive line, and he makes sure his players know that. Madison told us that one day Urban Meyer told them to stand up, and Derek Harvey, who is listed behind Ray McDonald on the depth chart, did not. He said, starters stand up, and Harvey did not. And Madison said to him, never do that again. You stand up because even though you're listed and you're not the first one in, you are a starter. All right, Trace. Another pass complete in the flat. Early Doucette, number nine. On first down, here's the handoff left side. Hester out of the tackle, gets a block downfield. Do not count LSU out of this. Don't give up on a game. You never, I really, I thought LSU got a little dispirited here. They, they just lost their spirit. They had a touchdown called back. You see the running game. Hester doing a good job. Good blocking up front. Florida's thinking pass. Then they fumble the snap. Get the penalties. They're roughing the pass. And I think even the jump pass took a lot out of LSU. They need to have something good happen to them. And the only way to do that is do it yourself and put points on the board. Thomas Seiler, Ryan Smith leading the way defensively. And that's not to mention Reggie Nelson. Here's Demarcus Russell. Has to throw this one away. Intended for Dwayne Bow, number 80, or Doucette, rather. It's kind of a catch-22. You don't have confidence that your offensive line can block and give you time, so you roll your quarterback. And when you roll your quarterback that far out, you are really only be able to throw to about 15 yards of the width of the field. Instead of using all 53, you're throwing to about 15. Florida's just too good, too fast, too many athletes to just attack 15 yards on the field. Second and ten, Justin Vincent is now the running back. Overthrown. Missed them badly. Wow. Third and ten. Bo and Davis go wide to the right, joined now by Early Doucette. Jamarcus Russell flips it out one-on-one. -on -one. Hester tackled Ryan Smith. Let it all the way. Actually, the screen led the back out too far. Let him away from his blocking backs. And I think from this far out now, fourth and 15. See, the screen was too far out, away from the protection. And Ryan Smith, who's really coming on as a football player, really getting comfortable in the speed in the SEC, is really making plays. I'm just wondering if LSU just doesn't go for a field goal on this. Just take the three points and make it a two-touchdown game. Whatever you do, hurry up and do something. Yes. Colt David does hurry on. Jamarcus Russell on the sideline. Matt Flynn, the backup quarterback, is the holder. 45 yards for Colt David. Perfect. That was the percentage play. Now you don't have to get two touchdowns and two-point plays. You can just get touchdowns. 11.53 to go in the ball game. Florida leads it by 13. LSU might get the ball back three times, most likely probably just two times. They almost have to play a perfect game or get some help from Florida. Michigan State, remember, turned that ball over twice in the last eight minutes. And here's where uh, Florida, I would think, misses Deshaun Wynn. Oh, yeah. Good point, Fern. Absolutely good point. That is, he's a tough guy to tackle. Remember, Tebow's averaging seven yards per rush. The rest of the team is averaging three yards a rush. Do you dare put in Tebow? Chris Jackson. Taken by Brandon James, number 25. Got a block up field. Jukes his way out of a tackle. Finally dropped. He was close, wasn't he? 
And a flag is down. Yeah, he can run, can he? We saw it already. Tennessee, when they called one back. He had an 89 yarder for a punt return touchdown that was uh, wiped out by a penalty, and this fine run is going to be. And remember, defensive line coach Greg Madison had to talk Urban into giving a scholarship to the running back. How does Greg Madison know this guy can run? Brandon James played for St. Augustine High School. Tim Tebow for Nice. High school football news here in Florida. <laughs> nice defeated St. Augustine 24-21 the other night. Wow. T-I-A-A. T-I-A-A. Cref, college football today, time permitting. Back in New York, here is Chris Leak. That's a 27-yard penalty because they start at the 10 instead of the 37. Yeah. Keiston Moore breaks the tackle, surges out near the 20-yard line. That nice a, run on first down. Yeah, that was a huge break of tackle by Gene Francis right there. Keiston Moore runs right through number 90. Big, tall, 300-pounder for LSU. Has him wrapped up right here. Lunch pail, lunch pail makes the play. That's exactly what he was looking for. Second down and one. Keiston Moore for the day. Eight carries, 32 yards. Mentioned Deshaun Wynn, the starter, out with a knee injury. Second and one. And the clock now at 10.50. Quick flip, right side, one on one, on the edge. Percy Harvin, number eight. Gets a first down at the 23. Now Florida currently fifth. Ohio State among the remaining opponents. They've got Michigan. Everybody's waiting for that one. USC, they get all three of those teams at home here. Right. West Virginia plays Louisville and Rutgers, and then Florida. This unbelievable schedule. And LSU then, and at what, Auburn. And what's not on there is the SEC championship where they might have to beat Arkansas or, or Auburn again to finish off the season. LSU had used the timeout. They have one remaining. It's second down and long. Here's the handoff on the wide receiver. End around is Jamel Cornelius. Nice job not going out of bounds by Cornelius also. Well coached. Smartly run. Got wide but did not go out of bounds. And LSU will have to burn their last one. 3.36 to go. And LSU has done that now. They use their final timeout. And that leaves Florida looking at third and four. Three minutes, 36 seconds remaining. At quarterback, takes the snap, and again, looks to run, now stops and throws the ball into the end zone for Tate Casey, and Casey makes the catch! Oh my! It was a jump pass to the tight end, Tate Casey! Tebow calling for the ball, and now stops, backs up, wants to throw the pass, got a wide open quarantine receiver, and it's caught for a touchdown! Oh, Lewis Murphy! Oh my! 35 yards, he was When we come back, we're gonna chip in and buy a seat belt for Mick Huber. <laughs> Third down. <laughs> oh, love to see the enthusiasm. Here's Jared Faison, the freshman, going around the right side. Chris Leak back. I'm surprised at that call, I have to be honest. I just think that pitching the ball with a two freshman, you know, you got a freshman player in there, Faison hand, handling that football, and they also went out of bounds to stop the clock. And that's 35 seconds it's going to cost them, or 25 seconds at least, coffee. And it is fourth and three. I thought for sure that would be right between the, the hashes run. Ohio State wins again. The shocker today, Arkansas, the Hogs 3-0 and in SEC West play. Go into Auburn and knock them off. And now here's fourth down, Eric Wilbur. It's blocked. It is blocked at the 19-yard line. Don't close the door on this one. Absolutely not. LaRon Landry got it. That wide punt from both teams. There is a flag on the field, though. Here's the call. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Village decline. Play stands. Well, that wide punt formation has killed both teams today. These great athletes have just split it 
I wonder why, you know, you, you see it in college ball, you don't see it in the NFL because of the speed of the athletes. Well, these two teams have these athletes, and they've both got a punt block. First block punt of the year for Eric Wilbur and the Gators. Here comes Louisiana State. Football game, huh? Oh. They are out of timeouts. Jacob Hester in the backfield with Jamarcus Russell. With time, hit from behind as he lets it go. Tipped in the end zone. Intercepted. Tony Joyner takes a knee. He was very, very, very close to coming out of the end zone. Joyner with the pick. Russell had a touchdown. They ran an inside stutter. And Jamarcus Russell threw it behind, slightly behind the receiver and floated it. He had a touchdown on the play. Watch it, Bowie, number 80, stutters, goes, touchdown. Throw it inside, throws it behind him, tips it up, and Joyner gets the interception. Ooh. Second tip for an interception today. Ryan Smith got one, Joyner gets this one. Jamarcus Russell came into this game with one interception for the season. That was against Arizona week two. He had thrown 84 in a row at the start of the game. He's now been picked off three times in this ball game. And Tim Tebow is in a quarterback. Flag. Well, you can see one possible little chink in the armor here for Florida. They do not have an offense that puts the game away well with the ball, do they? And they have to they have to bring in Tebow. They have to run the option. They're not good at either one of the option plays right now. And uh... Legal shift. Number 42 on the offense. Penalties five yards, still first down. In a tight football game, that could come back to haunt them. There's a lot of big games coming up still for this Florida team. We, we went through it. Uh, do you make too much of the Deshaun win? Do I make too much of the no. Deshaun win absence? No, I, I think that's a big part of the game. There, and, and Urban told us he has a slight tear of the meniscus. I don't know what that'll mean, but I mean, it, will he play more this year? Will he be 80%? We do not know. Here's Tebow. First down and 15 with 2.18 to go. Now they'll keep it on the ground. Here's Tebow out to the 19-yard line. Second down and 10. 140 to go. That was for the team. Here's Tebow again. And LSU cannot stop the clock, so we've got a minute 30 to go. Well, Last year, LSU won this. They won the last two, and they won it despite committing five turnovers. Since then, how about this? Teams committing five or more turnovers in a game haven't won once. Oh, 53. You mean there's been 53 teams that committed five or more turnovers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, and LSU was one of those 53. Yeah, that includes today, and the Gators are about to win their 13th in a row at home. Yeah, unless they get another punt blocked, I guess. So uh, take back the swamp is still the fashion. And here's Tebow being cut down. It'll be fourth down. Well, Florida, Urban Meyer stressing to us and to his team and to the media here in Florida, we must play one at a time. They've knocked off Alabama. They win today. Next up at Auburn, then a bye week, and then they get Georgia in Jacksonville. Probably as tough a four-week run in five ga four games in five weeks as well, I can remember. I I've never heard of one tougher. Their, their teams might be good, but these are tough teams and rivalry games at the same time. These, they, there's history to these games, and there's great players in these games, and there's a lot riding on these games. I asked Urban Meyer yesterday if he favored a playoff in college football. He said, I did when I was at Utah. Now that I'm here, uh-uh. Yep. Well, they have a tendency to vote Florida if they win all their games. Four seconds to go. Chris Leak will take the snap, run around for four seconds on the shotgun and try to run out the rest of this game. And there's the look of a team that had such high hopes. And Deshaun Wynn comes on the field. Now how about that? He's up to help protect the ball. That's how about that. That's it. The 
NFL tomorrow on CBS will begin with the NFL today at 12 noon. Tebow throws for two. And the Florida Gators go to 6-0 with a trip to Auburn up next. For Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, I'm Bert Lundquist. Good night from the Swamp.